So in this demonstration we're going to show you how to create charts and make them efficient. We're also going to show you how to create a dual Y chart. So in this page we're going to drop a couple of chart items initially, two of those. We're going to use bar charts, they're quite simple. And bar charts have this quick start that allows us to add the data. Um, we have an employee object over here and in the first chart we'll just show you the salary for each employee and we're going to use a series um, that is based on the department. So let's pick up the department here. Let's um, finish with the wizard and you'll see the data here. So we have the name of the employee at the bottom, the height of the bar shows us the salary and the color shows us the department. Right, the next bar next to it we want to show you similar thing but for the bonus that each employee gets. So again we're going to choose the bonus, the name, and then the department. Now the one thing to note here is that we can only choose in this wizard one value to show. So in this case it's the bonus. But what happens if we want to show the bonus times the salary in this chart? It's gonna be a little tricky to do it with the wizard. You can do it. I want to show you one more issue is that we created those two pages uh, using the wizard. The wizards create uh, service data providers behind it that fetch the information. So when I run this page now and I'll open the network monitor so you can see the calls that we're doing to the business object, you can see that we're fetching employees twice here. Okay, We're fetching it once for the left chart and once for the right chart, even though it's coming from the same source of data. So what would make sense is to actually combine those into a single variable. So to do that I'm going to go into our variables and I'm going to take the first service data provider that is based on this data type and I'm going to modify the data type to add the additional missing bonus field into here. So this is where the edit from endpoint is very helpful. We can scroll down and we can pick up the bonus field. So now we have this piece of information in the first data type and therefore in the first service data provider as well. So now we can switch the second chart to be based on the same first service data provider instead of the second. This way we're only using one service data provider and we can remove the reference to the other one and actually uh, remove the variable completely if we want to. Everything else stays the same. Now because we have in this variable both fields we can also have here a value that is a combination of both to show you the bonus times the salary. Okay, so this is the scale we wanted to see everything on. Alright, so let's remove the unnecessary variable over here. Like that. And the page just behaves just like before. Now we're going to add another chart below it and in this chart what we want to show is we want to show the bonus and the salary on the same chart. So basically one column for the salary, one column for the bonus for the employees on the same chart. You can see an example of how this would look over here and as you can see this is the chat cookbook and you can see that we have groups and series. Group is basically the employee name, series would be one series for the bonus, one series for the salary. You can see the structure of data that is needed over here and you can see there are four data points that we need for every record. We need an ID, a series, a group, and a value. So again, the quick start wouldn't let us create this type of structure, so we are going to do it on our own. Now in addition, this type of structure is not being returned from the REST endpoint, so what we would need to do is get the data from the REST endpoint and manipulate the structure. Now if we want to do this, a better way than using SDPs is to use an, acti a, an array data provider, ADP. ADP has the data available for you later on for manipulation. Okay, So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new array data provider that is based on uh, the data type of an employee. So let's create first the data type. This is going to be based on the structure of an employee. So from the get single employee method and we're going to pick the fields we need which is name, salary, bonus and the department. So this is our new data type. Uh, the default name that it gets is get employees. Maybe we'll change it to be get employee. 
Now let's create an ADP, an Array Data Provider, that is based on this data type. So we'll pick up Array Data Provider, we'll give it a name, AMP ADP, and we'll set it to uh, get the data later, okay, and hook it up to be from this data type we just created. So it would have the right fields and then we can indicate that name would be the ID field for us now. Alright, so this is our array data provider. We can now define an event in our page. This would be the VB enter event. And when we click on this event, we're going to execute an action chain. And this action chain is going to fetch the data. So we'll call it fetch data. So this would happen when we enter the page. What we want to do is when we enter the page, we are going to execute a REST call and we're going to fetch the data that we have about employees. Once we fetch the data, we want to put it inside our array data provider. So we'll use an assign variable and hook it up. So the results that are coming here from our REST call with this structure are going to go into our employee ADP, which has the same type of fields. So we can basically just map the arrays, <coughs> picking up items and mapping it to data, like that. So now we have an ADP that will be populated when we load the page. So we can take the first two charts and switch them from being based on the SDP to being based on our ADP. Because the structure of the data is the same, we don't need to do anything else. Simply just go over and switch the data to be coming from the ADP. And again, both of them can be based on the same ADP, the same structure of data. Now, we have the data inside our ADP. We need to transform it into the structure that we need for the third chart. Okay? To do that, we're going to need a JavaScript method that will do the data transformation for us. So first, let's define a, a new type. We'll call it the data point type, or just data um, type, like that. And this type is going to have the fields that are required for the new type of chart. So if you remember what we saw in the JET sample, we have an ID field, which is a numeric field. We have a value field, again, a numeric field. And then we need the series, which is a string. And we also need the group, which is a string. Okay, so we have the new data type. Let's create a new array data provider based on this data type. So we'll call this one um, the data ADP. And we'll make it an array data provider. Just like the other array data provider, we're going to bind the data to it later. And we're going to base it this time on our new data type. Uh, we can use the uh, ID field as the ID. All right, so we have the new array data type. Now we need to actually transform the data. So let's go over and add our JavaScript method. So in our page module, I'm just going to clear some space here and copy this piece of code. You can find this piece of code on our blog that uh, is linked from the comments about this video. And you can see we're getting here a result. This is actually an array. We're going to check if this array has any records in it. And if there are, there, we're going to create a new array called items. And then we're going to loop over the items in the result array and push information into the items array, basically creating ID, group, and series um, fields in there. The series one time would be salary, the other one would be bonus, and the values are coming from the results uh, fields accordingly. The group is always the name of the employee for each record. And then we're going to return the items back into our page. Okay, so we got this little Java script method. We can now invoke it after we populated our first ADP. So let's 
bring in this call to a method function and we'll use our transform method. Our method has an input parameter called result. So we're going to map this one and initially we're passing into it the array of employees. So this is the array that we're passing in. All right. So we'll have the bonus name and salary available over here. And then we're going to transform them using the JavaScript method. And then we're going to take the result of the JavaScript method and assign them to our second ADP. So our method is going to return a structure, which is basically an array with this ID, value, series, and group. So just map the results into the data array here. And that's it. We now have the results in a new ADP. We can go back to the page and bind our third chart to this new ADP. So data is coming from the data ADP. And now we need to define the value, group, and series. If you look at the other charts, you would see the format for specifying each one. Um, value, for example, in our case, it's coming from the variable called value. We kept it pretty simple, so value is coming from value, group is coming from group, and the series is coming from series. Now there's one more tricky thing that you might have not noticed, and this is that the group actually need three square brackets instead of two, like that. And once you do that, the chart would appear with information about salary and bonus side by side. Now if we run the page again, you would notice that we're only going to do a single fetch of employees, and we're going to populate all three charts from it. Two charts have one column, and the second one have two columns side by side, showing us the salary and bonus. And that's it.